community is incredibly important to me. So it's going to be rare that I call any kind of meeting and not every member of this campus community is not invited. So please get the word out to your colleagues and friends and peers who are not here. I know that there is no good time to have a campus-wide meeting, but it is incredibly important that we always try to make an effort to assemble, not only for the moments that are when we are going to be in crisis, but in good times, times to celebrate the good things that can happen in this, on this campus, and times to think about and become aware of together the challenges that we're facing here. Because if we aren't all to gather together to hear about these things at the same time, we're not on the same page with respect to confronting the challenges. And we're not on the same page when it comes to celebrating our successes. So I'm going to call that my pre-ramble. Because I did not write that part as my remarks. But um, seeing this place, I don't know if I expected it to be more empty or more full. I think I'm just most appreciative that there are people here. That being said, I'm going to get started. And some of the students are going to harass me. Because the few times that the student leaders have seen me speak this summer, I have boasted on the fact that I have never written a speech, maybe twice in my whole professional career. But this one was important to make sure that I said the things that I know I need to say, and so I actually did have to write it down this morning. So bear with me as I do less ad-libbing this time and read from my notes. So welcome to the start of the fall 2014 semester, a new academic year. I first want to begin with thank yous. Thanks to all of the staff who made preparations to have this campus facilities and operations ready for another academic year. Thanks to the students, the faculty, and staff who worked tirelessly to welcome our new students to campus, and to those who enthusiastically greeted the returning students back to this special place. And thanks to all of you who have welcomed me into your community and made me feel like I belong here. I began my tenure here at St. Mary's College on July 1. During this brief amount of time, it is apparent to me that St. Mary's College of Maryland has been waiting for solid and stable leadership for quite some time. You have welcomed me with smiles but your eyes looked weary. I know it has been a rough few years, with last year seeming to be the worst. I commend each and every one of you, the faculty, the staff, returning students, and the Board of Trustees for pulling together to keep this vessel, known as St. Mary's College, afloat. Today, I stand before you as your recently appointed president, and I want you to know that I am ready to lead this institution back to stability, prominence, and respect. I should have written pause for applause, right? All right. To effectively lead St. Mary's College, we must have a strong leadership team ready and able to work effectively within the structure of shared governance to stabilize the college and to work with you collaboratively, collegially, and confidently to move St. Mary's forward. Our leadership team is relatively new with respect to the length of time we have been in our respective positions at this college. However, I say confidently that you would be hard pressed to find a team that is not more committed to the students and to the community than the executive team at St. Mary's. And you have my word that I will work hard to ensure that this team is strong and capable and up for the demands required by our respective positions. Today, it gives me great pleasure 
to introduce to you someone who I know has the skills and characteristics required for the position that he now holds at St. Mary's. He has a demonstrated profound intellect and integrity, is thoughtful and compassionate. I believe he is a quiet force of nature and in a very short period of time, he has shown himself to be a wonderful colleague. I introduce you to our new Dean of Students, Leonard Brown. Leonard, please stand. Our leadership team will continue to evolve. In that context, I want to thank Don Bowman, who is our, who's serving as our Vice President for Advancement, for agreeing to stay with us until the end of this fiscal year as we prepare to launch a national search for a permanent Vice President. This position is so incredibly important as the person who holds this position leads our friend raising and fundraising efforts, essential activities for any institution of higher education in this day and age. Thank you, Don. This brings me to the subject of revenue. To run a college, to operate the college, we must have revenue. We have three primary sources of revenue. First is tuition and fees, then we have funding from the state, and finally the endowment. As should be evident from the crisis the college went through last year, and that remains, we must diversify our revenue streams. All of us have a role to play in helping us have money to support our students, our faculty and staff, as well as to operate this college. It is important that we realize that and encourage everyone to be entrepreneurial in thinking about how to diversify our revenue streams and equally important to contribute to the annual fund. No amount is too little. The days of depending on others to be the sole providers of our funds are gone. Even each of us bears some responsibility for ensuring the financial future of this college. We must get it done. Our largest source of revenue is from tuition and fees that is generated from our student enrollments. As you know, when we don't achieve our targets, our finances become strained. I want to thank our staff and admissions for the tremendous efforts to enroll in entering class that helps us meet our budget requirements while maintaining our admissions standards. As of, today, of yesterday, we have 486 new students on campus. Approximately 93% of those new Seahawks hail from our home state of Maryland. Academically, the new students in our community are as well prepared as previous entering classes with average GPAs of 3.2 for the 384 first year students and an average GPA of 3.15 for our transfer students. Let's welcome the new student scholars and applaud the tremendous efforts of our admission staff under the direction of our Vice President of Enrollment and Dean of Admissions, Gary Sherman, to get, get us to our new targets. <laughs> Having met our new student enrollment targets, we are on track to meet our budget projections. And I want to commend all of you for helping the leader, leadership team under the guidance of Vice President for Business and Finance, Chip Jackson, to develop a realistic operations budget for this fiscal year. I know it was tough, but you did it and we appreciate it. New students, however, represent only a portion of our total enrollment. After we enroll stu students into the college, we must retain them through graduation and keep them engaged as alumni. We all play a vital role in helping to retain all of our students. I ask that each of you do your part to educate our students and to keep them healthy and safe. We also have a new director of public safety, Clinton Brantley. And when you see him, please give him your support and encouragement because he has a huge undertaking with respect to our students. Maintaining and retaining our students is important for financial solvency. 
and more importantly, it represents our living borough, our ethos known as the St. Mary's Way. This year is indeed a year of a transition. St. Mary's has received negative press for a number of years for its high tuition relative to other in-state colleges and universities. Our unique mission to provide an excellent liberal arts education that is affordable and accessible is both a blessing and a challenge. We have had a difficult time bringing our costs into alignment with other institutions across the state because excellence in a small liberal arts atmosphere is expensive. Thankfully, we've had Delegate John Bohannon and others advocating for us in Annapolis. Thanks to the tireless support we've received from John Bohannon, last year we, will, we were able to keep tuition flat. This academic year, Delegate Bohannon helped us secure an additional $1.5 million in funding from the state that allowed us to decrease in-state tuition for our students by $1. $1,500, that's an 8.5% reduction in in-state tuition. That is something to be proud of and to celebrate. And I encourage you to let people know about that. I also encourage you to send a note of thanks to Delegate Bohannon, members of the House of Appropriations Committee, especially those on the Education and Economic Development Subcommittee, chaired by Delegate Bohannon, for their constant support of this place they call the Hidden Gem in Southern Maryland, which as you know is one of my goals is to stop being hidden in the state of Maryland, right? And we're going to work very hard on that this year. So even though we've had help with our tuition, it's still high relative to other schools in this state. And we still have a lot of work to do with respect to our state-funded block grant. This year, Chip Jackson and I will be working very closely with the members of the legislature to, adjust, to try to adjust our block grant to provide a level of funding that is consistent with our enrollments and to put us in a better place to provide the kind of education everyone expects of St. Mary's College. As you can tell by the number of emails, posters, discussions that have been occurring on campus thus far, we are actively engaged in Title IX activities. How many of you have read an email about Title IX? And those of you who have not read an email about Title IX, is your computer broken? <laughs> it is imperative that we all read those emails and that everyone in our community understands their rights and obligations as well as our policies and, pro and procedures. Title IX is a national priority. It is a major priority of St. Mary's College as well. We could and should be a national model for Title IX compliance because we believe in the St. Mary's way. We must make it so. This year, I'm focused on getting to know the college and this community to not only to help stabilize our circumstance, but to better prepare to lead us to a brighter future. I have spent a good portion of the summer meeting and getting to know members of our board of trustees, which is our governing board, and a foundation board, which is an independent board charged with helping us raise money and oversee financial management of our endowment. I've also spent a considerable amount of time with staff and friends of the college and the local community. The remainder of the year, year will be spent getting to know our students and faculty better, as well as to foster and enhance relationships beyond this county. I hope you will take the opportunity to attend those meetings and events that will be scheduled to help us to get to know one another better and to build the trust that we're going to need moving forward. To chart the course for our future, we must have a plan. I am charged by the Board of Trustees in my role as president of the college to lead our strategic planning process. To facilitate that process, I must have a sense of who we are as a community, and each of us should have an appreciation of who we are as an institution. As part of our reaccreditation process, we are currently engaged in a self-study. I want to thank everyone of the self-study committee and subcommittees for their work on gathering the necessary information for the report, and a special thanks to Mark Heydrich 
and Cynthia Koenig for assimilating the information into one document with one voice. With guidance from the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of Faculty, Beth Rushing. When a document is released, I strongly encourage each of you to peruse it and to lend your voice to the process. This exercise is essential for our reaccreditation and will be important for strategic planning that will commence next year. Now, as you listen to some of the issues we are conf confronting, it might appear to you that we are in a hopeless situation. I don't believe our situation is hopeless. I am by nature a problem solver, and I see nothing here that is insurmountable. To address the challenges, we must continue to work together as a collegial and collaborative community. I am inspired by the historical significance of this place. The people who inhabit this place, people of commitment and excellence, energize me. I believe we can get it done. It is now time to recognize just a few of the excellent staff, students, and faculty we have in our midst. Many of the names I call today will not be present. Nonetheless, it is important for you to congratulate these individuals when you see them and to let them know that you appreciate all that they do for our students and for this college. If I call your name and you are present, just stand up so we can congratulate you and recognize it. And I promise you, if you stand up, you can get a good breeze because I know you're sweating in those seats. So the first person I want us to recognize is Sarah Group. She's a 2014 recipient of the Joe Carroll Memorial Award. For our new community members, Joe Carroll was a 20 member 20-year member of our housekeeping staff who passed away in 2011. This award was created to recognize non-exempt staff members who exemplify Joe's commitment to the campus. Sarah is a member of our general support staff and is our ever cheerful mail deliveries staff person. Today she's enjoying a well-deserved day off. I'm sure she's in the shade. Please congratulate her and needle her a little bit for not being out here in the sun with us when you see her. <laughs> Professor of English Ben Click is a 2014 recipient of the Homer L. Dodge Award for Excellence in Teaching, which was presented at the awards convocation in April. Ben is currently on sabbatical. You can send him an email to needle him as well. Assistant Professor of History, Ken Cohen, is a 2014 recipient of the Homer T. Dodge Award for Scholarly and Creative Achievement by a junior faculty member. Ken is working on a classroom project this afternoon with his students. Professor of Mathematics, Dave Kung, has been named the Director of Project Next of the Mathematical Association of America. Congratulations to David for leading this important initiative. Associate Professor of History Charles Musgrove is returning to campus after spending a year in Taiwan as a Fulbright. Yay! Congratulations and welcome back. Finally. Professor of Psychology Libby Williams was named Woman of the Year, American Physiolo Psychological Association. Congratulations, Libby. As we opened the new academic year, I was impressed by the thoughtful and inspirational remarks made by a few of our student leaders. Please join me in recognizing student trustee Taylor Schaefer, class of 2015. <laughs> SGA president Kate Brennan, class of 2015. And first year student Elizabeth Bailey, class of 2018. Now Elizabeth, I don't know where that child is. Seems to me that first year should be here because they're supposed to just follow directions for at least half a semester. But what is really cool about Elizabeth is she was standing up there talk, making her remarks and she started talking about she just has this thing for Disney movies. So when you see her, you need to ask her, what happened to Lilo and Stitch? Because that's my favorite one and she left Lilo and Stitch out of the list. All right, so in closing, yay. Um, I'd like to recognize a group of, 
students from our offshore sailing team who won their class in the 2014 Governor's Cup race in August and who demonstrated great sportsmanship and teamwork during a difficult night of racing through high winds and heavy rains from Annapolis to the college. They were joined in this adventure by trustee Jim Muldoon. And Jim, I'd appreciate it if you'd join me up here at the podium. Where'd he? Oh, there he is. And I would like for these students to come up when I call their name, and we're going to give them a token of our appreciation. One item they're going to receive is a picture of themselves with Jim, autographed by Jim and Twanda. Okay. That's going to be worth a zillion dollars one of these days. And another thing you're going to get is one of these pens. Right? And um, this is important because when you wear this pen, this is our St. Mary's pen. And it shows that you're representing the college when you're out in the community. And by your good works during the Governor's Cup, we are honored and proud that you will be representing us in the world beyond St. Mary's. So without further ado, I would like to have come to the podium Jake Wolf, who's team captain, Michael Wolin, Wolin Wolf Faison, Lauren O'Connell, Austin Godwin, Ariana Neely, and Ben Weiss. And in absentia, we have two alum, Andrew Sergeant and Rob Kirshner. So, are you guys ready for some cookies and punch or something? Me too. So I really want to thank each and every one of you for coming out here and during the sun, listening to my not so brief remarks. I wish you all a really great semester and I look forward to talking to you. Thank you, Cloud, um, at some point during the semester. Have a good weekend. <laughs>